So I've been tinkering around with terrestrial plants, most importantly, the carnivorous plants. So this one right here is called a pitcher plant. It has liquids inside and when insects or things fall into the little pitcher, it'll pretty much trap the thing inside and then the plant will digest it and pretty much eat it all in that little pitcher right there. And then this one right here is called a sundew. As you can see the little specks and stuff on the leaves. That's sticky, that's really, really sticky. I don't wanna touch it, but um, it's like sap. And then when things get trapped in there, the leaves will roll up and then the plant will digest the insect. And then this is just a, what they call a moss ball. It's not carnivorous, but it's just kind of there to add on to the look. That's pretty cool, right? Like this is like a little monster. And then this is also like a little monster. And then it grows a little leaf. It's pretty interesting. I wasn't planning on talking about this project in the channel, but if you want to know more about it, let me know down in the comments below. But today's video is going to be about aquarium plants. Not these ones, but the plants that I'm planning on picking up today from the shears. Remember those days, those L's, I could sleep right now. I get paid, fake games, stay in peace. I break in the blues over steak, I gotta eat right. You could be my peace, I... <laughs> So I've been searching for the perfect piece of Anubias to add into my Bashir tank, but after a handful of local fish stores and stuff, I couldn't find the right one. I have one store left to visit, which is the one we're gonna go to today. And every time I checked, they always had centerpiece Anubias pieces in the top aquariums, and this is Neptune Aquatics. This plant takes such a long time to grow, um, I just needed to buy them big and then add them into the aquarium. Unlike these plants right here, where uh, I know that the Monte Carlo grow really quick, uh, I can't just, you know, add them in the tank and watch them grow. Anubias take a while to grow, honestly. So even though I trust Neptune Aquatics, I'm still going to take the precaution of preparing those plants before I add them into my tank. Because I don't need any more bladder snails, man, because that, that, that was bad. I've had video series of me dealing with bladder snails, and it got to the point where, like, the corners of my aquarium, it wasn't even a substrate anymore, it was all snails. It was kind of nasty. So I spent a greater portion of today trying to research different ways to dip your plants before you add them into your tank. I spent some time researching. There was like the aquarium salt dip. Uh, didn't really work for a good amount of people. It worked for some people, but for people that actually did tests and stuff like this individual right here, um, she did a whole bunch of tests on different ways to get rid of snails and stuff. And uh, aquarium salt didn't really work. The next thing was hydrogen peroxide. Uh, and then some other crazy chemical stuff. She tried it and uh, it kind of worked, kind of didn't. And at the same time, it was kind of dangerous for plants. So that was kind of uh, ruled out too. So aquarium salt is just too weak. And then the, the hydrogen peroxide and the other chemicals is kind of uh, harmful for the plant, especially because I'm buying this big piece of Anubias. It's kind of expensive, so I don't want to dip it just for it to die. It's not good. So I watched the most recent video she had on this plant dipping thing or pest snail control issue. And uh, she used this thing called alum, A-L-U-M. I'm gonna just go ahead and skip past the aquarium salt and the hydrogen peroxide and stuff. And honestly, it looked like she did all the research and the trial and error and stuff. So I might as well just take her word for it and just do it. Cause look, check it out. She has so many projects and videos of her just testing these things on snails and planaria and stuff. So we're just gonna go ahead and stop by a Safeway or a Lucky's or something and pick up some alum because apparently that's where you can get it. Uh, it's in like the spice area and stuff. So I'm gonna go ahead and pick that up and then come back to the house with the plants, of course, and then uh, try this dipping process. So let's go ahead and do that. Alright guys, so we're back at the house and went ahead and went to go pick up some alum. Apparently this is what people use to salt dip their plants, so we're gonna go ahead and give it a shot. Did the camera focus on that? Yo, y'all gotta see this. Alum. Yeah, yeah. They use alum to pickle things, so that's why it's gonna be in the spice aisle if you're looking for it. Uh, it won't be in like the supplement area like where you'd find Epsom salt and um, 
was a clove oil. This is gonna be in the spice aisle. So if you're looking for it, look over there first. First thing you gotta do is crack this open. Actually, the first thing I gotta do is pull up the instructions. Hold up. So according to that person on YouTube, the recipe is to mix one tablespoon of alum per one gallon of water. Soak the plant in the solution for four hours. Rinse thoroughly in water and then plant the plant in your aquarium. Don't use alum directly in your tank. That seems pretty simple enough, you know what I'm saying? Let's go ahead and start. Let me go ahead and add some dechlorinator into this bucket real quick. Here's Anubius. Look how tall this thing is, man. This is bad. This is bad. Hey, look, thumbnail, thumbnail. All right, so I went ahead and filled the bucket up to where I believe that Anubius is gonna end. Uh, this tip right here. Uh, it's kind of about four gallons or so. Went ahead and added dechlorinated water. All right, so in this little container right here, it's only 53 grams. I needed 70 grams, but I mean, anything is better than nothing. So I'm gonna go ahead and just try pouring this into this bucket. Let it soak for about, I think the recommended hours was three. I'll do it for three and a half just because I don't have a lot. And uh, we'll see how it goes from here. So let's do it. I'm gonna pour it down. Oh, that down. look at that. That's my album right there. So even though I didn't buy enough alum for this dip right here, uh, I wasn't gonna use the full dosage anyways, just because this is my first time dipping. This plant is pretty expensive, at least to me it is. And uh, I didn't wanna add too much medication. Maybe it might hurt the plant or something, even though she did do a lot of research and stuff and said that alum is safe for plants. Uh, I'm just gonna take it a little bit light for this one right here. So yeah, all we do is wait, uh, we'll let the alum do its work, and yeah, we'll just come back in about three hours. All right guys, so it's roughly been about three hours, maybe about two hours and 45 minutes. So while the plant is dipping, I'm gonna go ahead and just get out of this pot real quick. Look how big these leaves are, this is nuts. Nice, look at these crazy roots, dude, it's nuts. What's cool about these big Anubias is like the roots are so thick that it's easy to break this cotton part out. Don't really have to worry about ripping roots out of stuff. Oh, what's this? Is this three plants? Oh, okay. So it's not one big Anubias. It was three medium sized Anubias. So the dipping process is pretty much over, but I'm gonna take it an extra step by adding this water into this bag while we travel. That way uh, we can make sure every single hitchhiker or snail that could remain on these plants is pretty much done. So let's go ahead and put it into the bag. All right, so we're back at the house. Look at this guy, man. Look at the patterns on this dude. He's looking sick. Hey, look at this guy. What are you doing, bro? Can you, can you get off that real quick? Can you get off that? All right, cool. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. So these are the Anubias that I'm gonna be adding into the tank. There's a lot of algae on it because this tank right here gets a lot of light. This light stays on for at least 12 hours. Um, just because it's the sump, I wanna keep it on. It's easy for me to monitor. And yeah, that's the reason why these guys have so much algae on them. Even though I have two loaches in here, there's still a whole bunch of bladder snails right there. This is the reason why it's so important to um, dip your plants before you get them. Or else you're gonna end up with something like this, man. And that is not a good look. Look at that. Luckily, this is only in the sump. All right, let's go ahead and take this plant out of this dip mix. As you can see, it's still kind of, uh... oh, let me remove this. Oh, that was for the ride. As you can see, it's still in the solution, still dipping, still killing snails and stuff. So yeah. Now it's time to rinse this stuff off. Let's go ahead and pour this out. I use that to rinse off the stuff as much as possible. So Nubius is gonna naturally float. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and zip tie some biomedia at the bottom where the rhizome is. Nothing too crazy tight but uh, just enough to let it sink. Like this. 
this. All right, now that we're done with these three big ones, let's go ahead and take out the rest that's in the sump. But as you can see, we have a lot of Anubias right here. This is stuff from the sump, and the three big ones is from the local fish store. Let's go ahead and get these planted into the tank behind me. right now it's hard for me to give you guys updates because these guys are just so scared of the new plants and stuff they're just kind of polypiling in the back call it stirring up all the substrate and stuff so i'm gonna go ahead and end this video off right here i'll keep you guys updated on it having the anubias tied up like this is way better than having them fixed in a certain location because if these guys spaz out they're gonna smash straight into it and possibly even destroy the anubias so i have it like this so in case if they hit it it's kind of like a punching bag it'll just kind of come up and then it'll just go somewhere else and just land into the another piece of the substrate. I do want to add more things in here, but I'm staying away from rocks and hard pieces of wood because uh, for the safety of my Bashirs, I don't want them to, again, smash straight into it and injure themselves. So that's pretty much it for today's video. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Stay tuned for updates on these guys right here because I'm really hoping that it's going to work. I, I like the concept of it, but I'm a little doubtful that my Bashirs will let these Anubias slide without tackling into them. I honestly don't know what's going to happen. My Bashirs could play nice. Um, just got to stay tuned and find out. So, hope you guys enjoyed today's video. I'd like to thank you guys for watching. Stay tuned for the next one. And peace, guys. Mm -hmm.